Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Salem. I'm so grateful that we can gather together in spiritual community. So grateful for this team of musicians up here. I want to share with you, we've been gifted a new set of drums. And aren't they fun? Hope you'll enjoy those today. I invite you to stand as you're able and join us in singing, My God is so good to me. Christ light, join us in singing One in the Light. Holy flame of 
Good morning. I am Elizabeth, and I am your platform assistant today. We welcome you here to Unity of Salem today in the same warm and loving spirit with which Jesus greeted his friends. We greet you knowing that no one is here by accident or coincidence. We are each an essential part of the energy that is Unity of Salem, right where you are, along your life path, on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And I'm Reverend Patty, and it's my joy to also welcome you here this morning and to join together with you in prayer. Hmm. Sweet, sweet spirit. We are truly grateful for this glorious day. We are grateful for the blessing of those joining us here this morning in the sanctuary of those joining us online. For we are truly honored to be in spiritual community together, blessed by each other's presence. For this and so much more, we give thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. We would like to give a special blessing and honor and uh, to anyone who's here for their first Sunday service. If that would be you, if you would join me in just raising your hand so we could bring you a packet of information. Anyone? I don't see it here in the sanctuary, but there might be someone here online for the first time. And if that's the case, we truly invite you to check out our website um, for more information about Unity of Salem. Give us a call here at the office. We'd be honored to send you the um, information packet that we give out each Sunday. And we're truly honored to have you join us and to be in community with you today. Now, I have a few announcements to share with you. Thank you for signing up to support the family we adopted for Thanksgiving. Items are due back today, so we can deliver them tomorrow. If you have questions or forgot them, please talk with Trish. Tickets are now on sale for our Native American flute concert featuring Robin Gentlewolf and, and Jan Michael Looking Wolf. And this will be held Friday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Tickets are $15 and they can be purchased online or in the bookstore here at the church. And this event is offered through our Reimagine Home campaign. 50% of the proceeds will benefit our capital campaign. And there is still time to join those attending our annual Thanksgiving meal at McGrath's. You can sign up for this in the Information Center or by contacting the office. Our holiday food barrel will be here through, through early December, so let's fill it up with non-perishable items for the Marion Polk Food Share. Uh, see all those teddy bears and other cute cuddly animals all around the sanctuary? Love them up. Our goal this year is to gather 200 of them uh, to distribute to youth uh, at the holiday party on December 17th. Our Reader's Theater team is looking for cast members to perform a joyous Christmas classic on December 18th. If you'd like to join, the, join in the fun, please talk with Linda Catterall. Please join us for hospitality bef before and after the Sunday service. We are serving coffee and tea in the Information Center. And we do ask that you put a lid on your coffee so that we can uh, help keep the, the sanctuary clean. Our prayer chaplain for today is Reverend Patty. And she's available uh, for one-on-one -on -one prayer with you after the service on our sun porch. Now let us join together and sing more abundantly. I invite you to stand as you're able. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four.
We now join together in affirming our Unity of Salem mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement, centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy, and our core values. Inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Clay to share our reading for today. Okay, the word for today is accept. And our affirmation is, I accept God's goodness now. Do I think that having an accepting attitude means that I have to endure whatever happens to me? or admit defeat? Certainly not. Acceptance is an acknowledgement of good from God. I recognize and appreciate the presence of God in my life. I am guided and directed throughout every day. I am led to the people and the circumstances that are best for me. I experience the situations in life I need to experience without feeling overwhelmed. All this I do in acceptance of God's goodness. I joyfully accept God's love for me and give love back. In every word, deed, and action, I know exactly what to do and say, for God teaches me. I am here to learn and accept divine wisdom, which is far greater than my own or that of another. I accept God's goodness now. And from Psalm 105, 5, remember the wonderful works he has done.
love that you're moving into choreography now. <laughs> and I still don't know how you did that. I was like going, wait a minute, they're not turning left. They're turning right, so they will turn left. You did that very well. Well, today we are completing our journey through Michael Singer's book, um, Living Untethered. And, you know, throughout this time that we've been focusing on this book, we've truly taken a, a deep dive into understanding what it means to live tethered to something in the world around us. Um, what, it, what it means to, to have a deep desire for freedom in our lives, a deep desire for experiencing unconditional love flowing freely in every area of our life. To live lives that are unbound from the past or that have no connection to fear of the future. To truly being present in this moment and, and in this moment know the, the allness of life. Know that everything is holy. That, that this is the most powerful possibility is happening right here and right now in this moment. Um, and, and this moment is so precious. It, it's only happening this, this one time in, in forever. I mean, didn't we say that we have some 3 billion years or more? 3.8 billion years, I think, that it has taken for this moment to happen. And, and, and now that moment has just joined that one and we're in a new one. And so really, truly claiming the preciousness of this holy moment. And in order to do that, we have to make the, the choice to deal with our blocked energies. Or as Singer says, to clean up the mess inside and realize that it's not the world around us that's causing suffering. It's the stuff that we have stored inside. And the things we do um, the things we cling to or the things that we suppress are in our own consciousness. That's where they get stuck. And Singer refers to them as samskaras, coming from a terminology from the uh, Upanishads. And these, this, these energies, the stuck energy, is blocking the flow of energy moving through any area in our life. So it's time that we began working on letting go, letting go of those blockages, um, transmuting that energy, um, basically saying it's time for us to do our spiritual work that we're here to do. You know, we all know that there's great power in setting intentions. And I love Singer's suggestion that every morning we set this intention. The purpose of my day is letting go of my blockages and evolving spiritually. So you get up in the morning and you set this intention. The purpose of my day is letting go of my blockages and evolving spiritually. Can we affirm that together? The purpose of my day is letting go of blockages and evolving spiritually. The purpose of our day is to grow, to teach us to evolve spiritually. And then he suggests that at the evening, the, the last part of the evening, right before you go to sleep, you, you then affirm, the purpose of my day was to let go of my blockages and evolve spiritually. So we're bookending the day. So even when we don't meet that intention, we're resetting the energy and, and then beginning the day over the next morning. And that's going to really support us in letting go of these blockages in, in surrendering to the flow of energy moving through our lives. And it's going to take a lot of work on our part. It takes a lot of, um, of energy to stay focused to keep our awareness, our consciousness on our intention and to stop fighting it. At some point, we will realize that there's no one else inside our mind who's going to do it for us. There's no one else inside that will do it, which also means that 
we get to take responsibility for choosing to put those blockages in the way to start off with because no one else did it. We're the ones that bought into the energy. We're the ones keeping ourselves from our own highest good. And it's time to stop fighting ourselves. You know, here's an analogy that Singer used that may help. Imagine that you're in a game of tug of war. You are alone on one end of the rope and an entire NFL football team is on the other end. You're in big trouble. The force pulling you in the team's direction is very strong. You've studied all the latest techniques for how to dig in your heels, how to best use your body weight, and anything else that the experts could teach you about standing your ground in a tug of war. You're doing all the techniques, but they're not working. Suddenly, Yoda, the great sage from Star Wars, shows up to help, and he thinks everyone's name is Luke. <laughs> and Yoda says, Luke, you know how to do this. Let go. Let go, Luke. What do you mean, let go? If I let go, they will pull me through the mud head first. Let go, you must. I don't get it. How do I just let go when this great force is pulling on me? Relax hands, Luke. Relax your hands. No, not hands. First feet and legs and body position. That's how to end this tug of war. Over it will be, Luke, if you relax your hands. Now, maybe this just works for me because I've been on a few tug of war teams and I've been dragged through the mud a few times. Um, and it would have felt so free <laughs> to have let go. However, that wasn't the intention that I had set. The intention I had set was to win the war. And so I was going to dig in my heels at all costs. And quite frankly, it was quite painful. Um, I kind of enjoyed it. But that's not the intention that I've set for my life. That was one experience. And when we set the intention for our lives to dig in our heels and fight a war, guess what we're going to be experiencing? A whole lot of blocked energy um, because it isn't going to serve us well. So we've set a new intention. And I, I feel like, for me, I finally, in, in that analogy, began to understand at a deeper level what Singer was saying when he said that we need to relax and fall back behind the moment into the seat of self. Fall back behind the moment to let go of the rope and, and feel the power of that experience of letting go. Keeping in mind that we don't find the seat of self. We don't go looking for the seat of self. It's there all the time. It's never moved. It never leaves us. We just have to let go of trying to find it we have, and trying to find it in the world around us. We have to let go and allow ourselves to be present in it. Let your awareness slip into that space behind the moment. Let that energy, let God, lift you to a higher state of consciousness to the place where transmutation can happen, where energy can be transformed. It can flux. And then those blockages will be released or, or dissolved. They will disappear into the flow. So that's what we're going to do today with our gratitude ceremony. We're going to lift up this present moment and in opening the flow of energy, remember that our intention to let go of blockages is an intention to evolve spiritually. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 5, verse 16, 17. Paul tells us, give thanks in all circumstances. Some of you know, because I've talked about this every time we do the ceremony, I think this is a really important passage for us to get. It is uh, from the letter to Thessalonians. 
It's one of Paul's earliest known writings. Best guess is it was written in 52 BCE. Paul had been driven out of the city. And he, he got the information that there was a community still within the city that was enthusiastic about his teachings. And he wanted to reach out to this community. And he, so he wrote this letter, letter to encourage them to stand strong, to encourage them, even in the face of persecution, to stand strong and to give thanks no matter what happens. No matter if they get thrown in jail, no matter if they die, because dying was really the option of what, was, what they were looking at. And he's saying, give thanks in all circumstances. And the reason he says this is for Paul and for this community, the second coming was imminent. They really believed that this entity was returning at any moment and that that would mean the end of time. Well, that didn't happen, did it? We're still here. And while some of us are still waiting for that to happen, that's not how we look at the second coming here in unity. We interpret the idea of the second coming as the revelation of the indwelling Christ presence within each and every one of us. You know, as that energy being revealed to us as the truth of who we are, when we really finally get it, that we are an expression of the divine, that we are a spiritual being, and it's not just within ourselves, it's within each and every one of us. When we let go and experience that moment from the seed of self. Giving thanks in all circumstances about finding that thing that lifts us to a higher vibration that reminds us there is always something else going on beyond what we can perceive with our five senses. Living with an attitude of gratitude. And, and what, is, what is that? Well, that's just living as an expression of God. Living, allowing that Christ light to shine through us at all times. Alan Cohen, a great writer if you don't know who Alan is, said this. Gratitude is not the result of things that happen to us. It is an attitude we cultivate by practice. The more we are thankful for, the more we will find to be thankful for. So I invite you to close your eyes for just a moment and focus on answered prayer. Answered prayer in your life. Answered prayer in the life of this community. Is there something that comes to mind that you think of when, and, and are you immediately filled with overgrowing, overflowing gratitude? You can open your eyes. Answered prayer is an expression of our oneness with God. Answered prayer is a sign that we are in the flow. And in acknowledging answered prayer, we can't help but feel grateful. So what I want to do now is to invite you, if you feel called, and if you are willing to share your answered prayer with us, so that we can all join you in this circle of gratitude, is to come forward, and, I, and here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to start by lighting this candle in the center of the table from the Christ candle up here that we lit at the beginning of the service. Then I invite you to come, pick up a match, light it off of the candle I have lit, light one of the votives, and then you can, can turn and blow out the match or sometimes shake it, it'll go out. There's a glass container to put the matches that have been lit. Please don't put it back in the bowl with the ones that have not been used. Um, the empty one, it would be the appropriate one. Then you'll turn around to the congregation, and there's a microphone here, and, and you're invited to share your answered prayer. Share that with, for, with which you are grateful for. And, and that doesn't mean you're telling us a story. That we're not, we're not, we don't want to be here all afternoon, do we? 
It means truly just inviting us into that energy of answered prayer. And when you are complete, and, and you may be complete with silence, silence is always just as appropriate as anything else, I invite you to say this at the end so that we know. I invite you, my spiritual community, to hold this light with me. So again, those words are, I invite you, my spiritual community, to hold this light with me. And then we have a response. And the response is simply, yes, we hold this light with you. Anyone have questions about that? Okay. Let me get the candle lit. So is anyone feeling called to step up first? Looks like he is. So the matches are right there. grateful for the answered prayer that unity of Salem is open for all of us after the pandemic and I invite you my spiritual community to hold that light with me yes we hold this light with you anyone feeling called to come up next Clay My answered prayer is that I am joyful in my life and I am surrounded by people I love and who love me and I am truly grateful for that and I invite my community Hold this with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. Thank you. Dale? I was a traveling musician for many years. I always sought out the Unity Church of that area that I could attend because I got started with Unity way back when I was in junior high school with my mother. I am so grateful that this church is here in Salem. I am grateful that I am here in Salem settled, hopefully, and that there is a unity church to attend and feel blessed in. Thank you. And I invite you, his spiritual community, to hold this light with him together. Yes, we hold this light with you. You guys, we can, we can create a line, it's okay. You can stand too. I was 
especially grateful for my large family, but my heart really talks to my daughter who is close by, and I'm especially grateful for her blessing me. So I invite this family to hold that blessing with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. My answered prayer is finishing an eight-year project at work and being willing to pass on the next phase to another group. <laughs> that was hard for me. And I invite you, my spiritual community, to hold this light with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. I am grateful for this community and especially grateful for the friends from this community that kept me socialized during long COVID. I ask you, my community, to hold this light with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. I am so grateful for my continued health and well-being and grateful for the love and support of this community and that we remain open for all. And I invite you, my spiritual community, to hold this light with me. Yes, yes we hold this light with you. recently I uh, was praying for the right and perfect uh, adult foster home for my son Scott and that came that that answer came uh, just a few weeks ago and uh, uh, I am very grateful for it, for that and I ask this community to hold that light with me yes we hold this light with you time I get to spend with my beautiful grandchildren. And I ask my spiritual community to hold this light. Yes, we hold this light with you. for um, a lot of things that are going well in my life. Specifically, I just bought a new house. I'm getting married soon. Uh, life is doing a lot of good changes for me. So I ask you, my spiritual community, to hold this light for me. Yes, we hold this light with you. I'm so 
grateful for this beautiful piano in this space that I get to play. Uh, I've been holding a vision for this for quite a while. It's really a gift. And then now we're showered with uh, drums and there are other instruments that have come into my life or in my home right now. I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for the music team and some new faces and uh, talent that I get to play with. Such a gift. And um, and just to make music in the spirit with all of you. So grateful. So I ask you, my spiritual community, to hold this light with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. My answer to prayer is, um, my mom had six children. She kept three, three were adopted out. And over all of my life, I always wondered where they were. 20 years ago, one of the sisters found us. And about eight years ago, the other sister found us. And the only boy, she had six, five girls and a boy, the only boy was born right after me. And we just found him here this year. Mm -hmm. We're getting together for our first Christmas ever. And he's 69 years old. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting together next month, and I'm grateful for that. So I ask you, my spiritual community, to hold that light. Yes, we hold this light with you. Are you feeling called? After two and a half years of teaching uh, remotely, I'm very grateful to have a smooth transition to in-person learning again. And I ask you, my community, to hold this light with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. Anyone feeling called? It's okay to say yes, and it's okay not to. Okay, we're gonna, oh, go ahead. Well, I'm feeling quite grateful this year to be spending Thanksgiving with my family by choice. And my oldest and dearest childhood friend, her parents have been like second parents to me, both before my parents passed and beyond. And then all of her kids are going to be here. They're my godchildren. So it's the first time that all of us have been together as an extended family in quite a few years. So I ask that you hold this light with me. Yes, we hold this light with you. prayer. Uh, feeling provider for <laughs> Kurt Comey. Let's play some music. <laughs> Thank you. And may we hold this light with him together. Yes, we hold this light with you. So Dale is lighting a candle for Kurt. <coughs> well, I'm grateful that Kurt can play in more than one key. <laughs> <laughs> and Kurt, what would you like to share? I met Kirk when I first came here 
several years ago. And he, uh, I don't know, maybe he got tired of the drums. He left for a while. But uh, I'm glad to see him back. Thank you. And, and Kurt? My answer to prayer is the opportunity to wake up every morning and see the miracle that happens each day. And, uh, I thank the spiritual community. So for those online, um, his answered prayer is the opportunity to wake up each day and know the miracle of that day. And uh, he invites his community to hold this light with him together. Yes, we hold this light with you. And shall we move into a time of meditation? Know that if you feel called to light a candle and you haven't, they will still be there after service and, and feel free to walk up and light one. So for now, if you're comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes. Maybe set your feet on the ground, set aside anything which might distract you and focus your energy on your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Let your body relax. Let the chair that you are sitting on fully support you. as you let go. We move into this time of spiritual communion together, aware of our many blessings. As we breathe and go deeper, we move from the outer world to a place of peace within. We enter a blessed state a place of profound gratitude. We are thankful for life itself as it bubbles up and expresses in and through us. Enfolded in the fullness of gratitude, I invite you to allow the energy of gratitude to be fully present right here and right now, to fill your heart until it is overflowing with joy. And allow that joy to resonate in every cell of your body, every part of your being. You are fully immersed in the flow of gratitude moving through you. And we take a few minutes to bask in the glow of these feelings, to allowing the unlimited source, God, to divine mind, flow through us right now as we listen in the silence. And as we continue to allow this energy of unlimited spiritual possibilities to flow through us, we send this energy to the prayer box that's right here in front of the lectern. And as we do this, we speak either out loud or in the silence of our heart the names of those that we would like to add to the names in this prayer box. We know that they are enfolded in love and light. That there is nowhere that God is not, that God is already at work in each life of those for whom we pray. Guiding every thought, word, and action. Providing an abundance of whatever is needed to restore health and wholeness, to bring forth peace, abundance, the highest good. 
And we now see that light flowing out to fill this room and flowing from this room out into this community, to this country, this planet, this universe. For we know God is unlimited good and there is more than enough to do God's work wherever it is needed. And with grateful hearts, I invite each of us to return to this room refreshed and renewed as we give thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Now we have the opportunity to share of our tithes and offerings to support the work of the spiritual community. Recognizing that unity of Salem would not be possible without your gifts. We are grateful for each and every one of you here in the sanctuary and online for joining us in this joyful journey together and for knowing together that we are blessed as we bless the checks, the, the gifts, the financial gifts that come in during the service that come in through the donate button on our website, that come in through the mail, that arrive at the office, however they arrive. And we hold this energy in the palm of our hands as we fill it with love, affirming our offertory blessing together. Divine love flowing in through and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen.
as Elizabeth brings forward our tithes and offerings. We know that this energy of gratitude has infused these gifts, and we send these gifts forward with wisdom, with joy, to do God's work. And we know that as we bless these gifts, we bless the food going to our family this week, the food going to Mary and Polk Food Share, the food in our abundance corner. Truly knowing that we are making a difference and we give thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. Some of you know that we... Um, are part of the bottle drop program. So if you don't have a blue bag at home, I know a few people, mainly Alice and Roland, that would love to help you find a blue bag and take it home and fill it with bottles. And if you bring it back by next Sunday, we get an extra 20% revenue um, as a holiday gift from the bottle drop program. So as many as we can get back here next Sunday, they would love to see that happen so that they have some time during the week to get them turned in. And now let's stand and join together in our closing song, God is Good All the Time. You might want to shake your hands for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh. All right. One, two, three, four. for protection together the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us the power of God protects us the presence of God watches over us wherever we are God is and all is well and we are blessed when Always. namaste